Okay, so now that we have our item set up, what we need to do now is we need to go and spawn them in the right location. So let's go up to our did move to view here, and what we're going to do is we're going to say the uh, we'll spawn the leader, we'll spawn the player, okay, and if we look at this here, we have the leader, the collectibles. And it looks like we do need to spawn the player. So let's go ahead and let's do that before we move on here. And let's go to function spawn player. And what we'll do here is we'll say player is equal to sk sprite node. And we'll make this player here off white color. Will be player size. And then we're going to go to player.size is equal to player size. And then we're going to go to player.position is equal to CG point. And we will put this CG rect get mid x self dot frame. And then what we'll do is we'll put CG rect get mid y self dot frame. Okay, we need to add in the physics, so it's going to be player dot physics body is equal to sk physics body. Move that down a bit. And we'll do player dot size. Then we're going to go to player dot physics body dot affected by gravity is equal to false. And then we're going to go to player dot physics body dot category bit mask is equal to physics category dot player and then player dot physics body dot contact test bit mask is equal to physics category dot and then we'll say that this is the collectible we're going to go to player dot physics body dot allows rotations equal to false and then we're also going to go to player dot physics body dot dynamic is equal to true player dot name is equal to player name and we're gonna say self dot add child is equal to player okay just like that here okay we want to make sure that we clear up any errors before we move on here and one other thing I should mention is you see how I kind of just powered through that that's one thing you might want to do when you're building games is that you kind of just power through that here so let's go back up to the top here we'll spawn the leader we'll spawn the player and what we'll also do is we need to spawn the labels here okay so we'll spawn LBL main and spawn LBL score okay LBL score. All right, so let's go ahead and let's run that here. Now, what we need to do is we'll just take a look at this here, and you know, okay, so we got the leader and we got the player, but a couple of problems. Problem number one is if we look at this here, we need to go to our main label, and it's a little bit too big, so let's make it 50 instead. So let's go ahead and let's run that here again. And we will say, yeah, 50. That looks pretty good. And since we both spawn these in the center, you can see that they kind of um, move, uh, they kind of, they don't, they collide with each other. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to set up the controls now, and we're going to go to override function touches moved. Okay, and then in here we're going to say for touch in touches. Excellent. And we're going to say touch location is equal to touch dot location in node. And we're just going to type in self. While we're at it, let's go up to our touches began here and say touch location. That way we can go and um, use the touch location wherever we want. Okay. So let's say if is game over is equal to false. And remember, we want to have that game state variable in there. We're going to say player dot position dot x is equal to touch location dot x. Now, here's the thing about this: 
In Swift 1, you were able to get away with this. Player.position.y is equal to touch location dot y. So you can see that both of these here are are being set up. Okay, we'll go here and we'll also go here like that. And I like fixing it just like that here. And one thing I, I should mention, okay, and if we take a look at this here, we can now move it around. Now this here is the leader, and you can see how I'm kind of moving this this leader or this block around. It's because there's collisions enabled. Okay, so that's something that's interesting. Uh, and you, you have to see collect leftovers. So we have something that's pretty neat here. Okay, very good. And for the most part, uh, that pretty much uh, wraps this up here. What we need to do is we need to spawn the the collectibles and the the block avoids here. And in order to do that, we need a timer. So we'll do that in the next tutorial.